I get asked a lot, which is the best app to use? The app that I use is Drive-In Test Success, otherwise known as the 4-in-1 app. I'm not saying it's the best app, it's the one that I use in the classroom with my students, it gives me the best results. I also get asked, what's the best way to study? The best way to study is to study each individual category in turn. There's 14 categories, work your way through all of them, and then move on to your 50 question mock test. I'm gonna give you the best possible start to help you pass your theory test first time. I'm gonna use my app of choice, Driving Test Success, and I'm gonna do a 30 question mock test on each individual category week in, week out. So follow the series. This is gonna give you the best possible chance because I'm gonna break it down with hints, tips, little nuggets for you to look for. So just in case you haven't seen my videos before, the theory test is black and white. It's either safe or it isn't. The theory test for DVSA is looking for you to choose the safest option. If it's not a safe option, they want you to choose a controlled outcome. As we go through the series, I'm gonna give you hints, tips, and tricks. If you followed my advice, you should be passing that theory test. So let me jump onto my iPad and let's get started. So the first question, there are no speed limit signs on the road. How is a 30 mile an hour limit generally indicated? Now, a 30 mile an hour limit based on the highway code is indicated by street lights. So if there's street lights and no other signs saying otherwise, then it's gonna be a 30 mile an hour road. So let's see what option they gave us. By a pedestrian island, no. By street lighting, that's what we agreed. Always read the other answers because sometimes there's a better answer with more information. By double or singular lines, no. By hazard warning lines, no. So it's the one that we take. Street lighting indicates a built up area of 30 miles an hour. What's the meaning of this sign? Now this black and white sign is the national speed limit for the road you are driving on. It's the national speed limit for the road you are driving on. So let's see again what option they gave us. No waiting on the carriageway, no. No entry for vehicles, no. National speed limit applies, yes, but still read the others. Local speed limit applies, no. What's the nearest you may park to a junction? 12 meters, 15 meters, 10 meters, 20 meters. Now I'm gonna give you a little bit of advice on this when I get, give you the right answer. The answer is 10 meters. The closest you can park to a junction is 10 meters. Let me give you a hint, tip and advice for your ferry test. As much as I don't like people memorizing answers, there's always exceptions to any given rule. And this is one of them. The three meters that you need to know for your ferry test is this one. Should not park within 10 meters of a junction. 45 meters is where you place your triangle from a broken down car, but never on a motorway. And 100 meters is poor visibility is when you're gonna turn your lights on. So let me just repeat that. 10 meters is where you should not park near a junction. 45 meters is where you place your triangle from a broken down car, but never on a motorway. And 100 meters is where you turn your lights on when it's poor visibility. That's the three that you need to memorize and then you'd be good to go. A single carriageway road has this sign. Remember the sign previously was national speed limit for the road you're driving on. So what's the maximum permitted speed for a car towing a trailer? So let me just go for that again. A single carriageway road has this sign, so it's a national speed limit. What's the maximum permitted speed for a car towing a trailer? Right, a little tip for you guys. I'm gonna give you so many tips in this series, so keep following week in, week out. So this one, national speed limit applies. The way that I explain to my pupils in the classroom, you're taking the car theory test, you want a car driver license. Know what you can do on a particular road. So it's 70 miles an hour on a dual carriageway stroke motorway, which is the same thing. So a car driver can do 70 national speed limit. On a single carriageway as a car driver, you can do 60 miles an hour. Now, when the question comes up towing vehicles or heavy goods vehicle, you just drop it by 10 for that particular road. So 70 miles an hour is what you can do on a motorway or dual carriageway, drop it by 10 to 60. On a single carriageway, you can do 60, drop it by 10 to 50. Now let's go back to the question. So let's just read the question again. A single carriageway road has this sign. 
what's the maximum permitted speed for a car towing a trailer? So remember, you can do 60 on a single carriageway because it's a towing trailer, drop it by 10, we're now looking for 50. Don't need to read the rest because we already worked it out logically in that sense. What should you do when there's an obstruction on your side of the road? So the obstructions on your side of the road. So let's see what the options are. Give way to oncoming traffic. That's the safest one. Because the obstacles on your side, you may need to go to their side of the road. So you've got to give way to oncoming traffic. But let's read the others. Accelerate to go past first. That's the dangerous thing, so it can't be safe. Car carry on as you have priority. You do not have priority in that situation. Wave oncoming vehicles through. Once you wave someone across the road or wave someone through, to be honest, your driving test is over because it's not safe to do that. You see these double white lines along the center of the road. When may you park on the left? Now they are talking about the broken lines. Now, if you're using the driving test success app like I am, you can enlarge the picture. So they're talking about the broken lines. With images, again, a little tip for you guys, with images, you go from bottom to top. Imagine that you're going from bottom to top. And that way, you're now working out exactly where you are. So the lines are opposite you on your right hand side, they're broken. That's parking restrictions. It means you can drop them off or pick them up, but you cannot wait for them. So it's a waiting restriction. So let's see what options they gave us. During daylight hours, no. To pick up and set down passengers, yes. But again, always read the other options just in case. When there are no yellow lines, that's the common answer that comes up in the classroom, which is wrong, obviously. In the line nearest to you is broken. So it's going to be that option. When may you drive over a pavement? The only time you can legally drive over a pavement is to get into property. So obviously a driveway of some kind. So let's look for that type of option. When the pavement is very wide, no. When there are no pedestrians nearby, no. To overtake slow moving traffic, no. To gain access to your property, which is a driveway, yes. What's the meaning of this sign? This sign is a waiting restriction. Um, so it means you can drop off and pick up your passengers. If you remember the previous question with the white line that was broken, that's the same as this, but just in a white line form. So this one means no um, waiting restriction. Drop them off, pick them up, but you can't wait for your passengers. So first one out of the hat, waiting restrictions. No entry, no national speed limit, no school crossing patrol, no. When may you stop on a clearway? Never is the answer to that question. They normally, black, the fairy tales, like I said, is black and white safety. When can you stop on a clearway? A clearway is just a road they want to keep clear. That's all it is. Nothing special, nothing to be freaked, about, freaked out about. So it's a road they want to keep clear. So the answer to this one is probably going to be never. So let's see what they're giving us for this. When it's busy, no. In rush hour, no. During daylight hours, no. And answer, never. You're waiting at a pelican crossing. What does it mean when the red light changes to flashing amber? Now, pelican's the only one that has a flashing sequence. So if it's flashing for the theory test question or answer, give way to pedestrians already on the crossing. Be very careful. Give way to pedestrians already on the crossing. Not the common answer. Give way to pedestrians waiting to cross. So let's see what option they gave us. Wait for the green light before moving off. You don't have to wait for green on a pelican. Move off immediately without any hesitation. If you're moving off immediately and, some, immediately and someone's there, you're going to knock them over so it can't be saved. Give way to pedestrians on the crossing, is what I said before. Get ready and go when the continuous amber light shows no. You're waiting at a level crossing. What must you do for train passes but the lights keep flashing? The key word must, when they use the word must, it's almost like law. What must you do? What must you obey? So park and investigate, no. Phone the signal operator, no. Carry on waiting, it's gonna be the safest option. Trains normally go in pairs, so if one passes from right to left, another one's coming from left to right. So just keep waiting, be patient. You can't be in that much of a rush. And edge over the stop line and look for trains, no. Where's the safest, no, it's safest place to park your vehicle at night? On a busy road, no. Near a red route, no. In a garage, yeah, that's the safest place because it's locked up. In a quiet car park, that's what a thief wants is for it to be quiet so he won't be disturbed when breaking into your car. So the safest place is going to be in a garage. 
when must you stop your vehicle? When must, again, law type situation, when must you stop your vehicle? If you're involved in an incident that causes damage or injury, of course you've got to stop for that. Um, at a junction where there are giveaway lines, you don't have to stop at a giveaway. You must give way to traffic at a giveaway line, but you don't have to stop at a giveaway line. At the end of a one-way street, again, no. Before merging onto a motorway, again, no. So if you're involved in an accident or collision, you have to stop by law to make sure everyone's all right or swap details, depending on how serious it was. You're in a built up area at night. So it's nighttime. Always look for golden nugget clues. So it's nighttime and the road is well lit. Why should you use your dipped headlights? If it's nighttime, it's well lit. Why should you use your headlights? So you could be seen or to see others. It's simple as that. So that you can see further along the road, no. So that you can go at a much faster speed, no. So that you can easily, sorry, dyslexia kicking in. So that you can be easily seen by others. Yes, that's why you use your headlights. So you could be seen. So that you can switch to main beam quickly, no. You're parked in a busy high street. Again, what's the safest, go the nugget there. What's the safest way to turn your vehicle around so you can drive in the opposite direction? Drive into a side road and reverse out into the main road. No, you're reversing that into a main road. You should never reverse out into a main road because your vision is um, partially blocked. Turn around in a quiet side road. That's going to be the safest option so far. Carry out a U-turn. Shouldn't be carrying out a U-turn on a busy main road. Ask someone to stop the traffic. And again, you can't be doing that. Other than direction indicators, how can you give signals to other road users? Now, a lot of people who are learning to drive don't know this. Another form of a signal on a car is brake lights. Your brake lights are red. It tells people that you're slowing down. So another form of a signal is brake lights. By using brake lights, first one out. By using side lights, no. By using interior lights, no. By using fog lights, no. What's the speeding for a car? towing a caravan on a dual carriageway. Similar to the question we had before, single carriageway. So if you remember, as a car driver, you can do 70 on the dual carriageway stroke motorway. It's towing, drop it by 10, answer 60. So let's go straight for 60. As long as you work out logically, you don't have to go through the other options. You're turning right at a crossroads. An oncoming driver is also turning right. What's the advantage of turning behind the oncoming vehicle? This is what we call offside to offside. So you're actually driving past the car to turn. The advantage is you've got a clear view of the road. If you do near side to near side, your view, vision or view is blocked. So offside to offside, driving past the car to turn, it means you've got a clear view of the road. So you'll be able to turn without stopping, no. You'll have more time to turn, no. You have a clearer view of any approaching traffic, yes you'll use less fuel because you can stay in a higher gear, no. You're looking for somewhere to safely park your vehicle. Where would you choose to park? Again, this is similar to the question previously, but sometimes they ask a similar question, but don't give you the same options. So let's see what they've got for this one. So let me just read the question again. You're looking for somewhere to safely, keyword, safely park your vehicle. Where would you choose to park? Near the brow of the hill, no. A brow of the hill is at the bottom of the hill, so a car comes over, you're there, you don't want to be there, it's not safe. At or near a bus stop, no, you can't be doing that, it's not safe. In a designated parking space, that's a strong possibility, because it's the safest, or safely, on the approach to a level crossing. And obviously you can't be parking your car on a level crossing. Um, so the safest one is in a parking spot. Where may you overtake on a one-way street? Now, when this question comes up, everybody thinks a one-way street is wide enough for one car, so they always go for um, overtaking isn't allowed. Overtaking is always allowed if it's safe to do so. Now, when they ask this question, they're talking about lanes. So if you've got three lanes and the cars are all going in the same direction, overtaking could be left, middle or right. It makes no difference because you're all going in the same direction, so technically that's going to be safe. So or only on the left-hand side, no. On either the right or the left, yes. Overtaking isn't allowed. Again, that's the common answer in the classroom. Only on the right-hand side, no. So as I said, they're talking about lanes. They don't make it clear in the question, but they are talking about lanes when they talk about overtaking on a one-way street. You're driving at night with your headlights on main beam. A vehicle is overtaking you. 
when should you use when should you dip your headlights so when this question comes up they the answer the common answer is just before the overtake you're still driving in the dark if that happens your main beam is on because the road is really really dark that's why you've got your main beam on so you can see clearly so the time to overtake is when the car's overtaking you so as soon as it passes you and gets in front you dip your lights so not to blind him so that's what we're looking for only if a driver dips their, their headlights, no. Sometime after the vehicle has passed, no. Before the vehicle starts to pass, that's the common answer. Remember, if, he, if you dip your lights before he passes you, then you're driving in the dark, technically. As soon as the vehicle passes you, is that one you want. So as soon as he passes, he overtakes. As soon as he passes to come in, you dip your lights. Now you can use the, his rear lights to help you have a better view. When should you use the right hand lane or a three lane dual carriageway? Now this question comes up a lot. Be very careful when the question comes up because they ask the question in two forms. One, a dual carriageway, which this one is, and the other one is a motorway. Now if it's a motorway question, it's right hand lane just for overtaking. Simple as that. On the dual carriageway, it's for overtaking and turning right. So it's overtaking and turning right or overtaking or turning right, which way you want to word it, but it's going to be both. When you're overtaking only, no. When you're overtaking or turning right, yes. When you're using cruise control, no. When you're turning right only, no. What does this sign mean? Remember, always enlarge it so you get the full clue. That's your parking restriction in black and white form. That's that red circle that we had before with the diagonal line. It's got zone N. So you're looking for something along the lines of parking restriction. That's your golden nugget. Enlarge it. That was a red circle we had on the previous questions. Um, it's crossed out, so it's end of. So we're looking for something along the lines of the end of um, parking restrictions. End of traffic calming measures, no. No through road, no. End of controlled parking zone, yes. Free parking zone ends, no. You're traveling on a motorway in England. When must you stop your vehicle? Again, must. A law type thing, what you must do, right? When signaled to stop by a driver who has broken down, not law, not official if it's another driver. When signaled to stop by a traffic officer, that's your traffic patrol officers who um, up and down the motorway directing traffic. So if they ask to stop, it's law, you need to be stopping. When signaled to stop by a pedestrian on a hard shoulder, again, you shouldn't be stopping on a hard shoulder and the pedestrian shouldn't be on the hard shoulder anyway. Anyway, they should be behind the fence, be safe. When signaled to stop by roadworks, supervise again no not official because the key word there is must stop your vehicle in the question so again look for the little golden nuggets that gives the clues which vehicle might have to take a different course from a from normal at a roundabout you're now looking at a lorry long vehicle that type of thing because they have to swing out to get around evenly where for those of you taking driving lessons you're staying that meter from the curb so van, no, a state car, no, sports car, no, a long vehicle, yes. What does this sign mean? Again, enlarge it, blue circle. Blue circles are mandatory if you didn't know. This is the minimum speed limit and it's crossed out. So you're now looking for something along the lines of end of minimum speed. End of maximum speed, that would be a red circle. Maximum speed limit, again, red circle. Minimum speed limit, yes, blue circle, but it's crossed out, so it's end of minimum speed, which will be the last one on the list. Why could it be dangerous to reverse from a side road into a main road? So you're coming from the side road into the main road. I gave an answer to this or clue to this earlier on on a previous question, driving on a one-way street, I think it was. Um, reversing out into a main side road into a main road is dangerous because your view is partially blocked and you're going out slowly, a car's already doing maximum speed on the main road. That is asking for serious trouble. Your view, your view will be restricted, yes. Your mirrors will need adjusted, no. Your reverse sensors will beep, no. Your reversing lights will be hidden, no. You're approaching a busy junction. Again, key word there, golden nugget, busy junction. What should you do when at the last moment you realise you're in the wrong lane? If that's the case, keep on going. Safest options, keep on going, find a different route. Use arm signals to help change lane, no. Stop until the area has cleared, no, because it's busy. Force your way into the lane you need. Once you've got force in there, you know that can't be safe. 
continue in that lane. Yeah, continue find a different route, it's not a problem. What must you do if you come across roadworks that have a temporary speed limit displayed? So if you come across roadworks with a temporary speed limit, you have to obey the temporary speed limit by law. Um, that's the safest option. It's there for a reason. Use your own judgment that limit is only advisory, no. Ignore the displayed limit, no. Obey the limit, but only during rush hour, no. Obey the speed limit. That's gonna be the safest option all round. What should you do if an amber light comes on and a warning sounds while you're driving over a level crossing? So again, the key word there is you're driving over the level crossing when this is happening. If you're already on the crossing, keep going, it's too late to stop. Amber's warning is gonna change, but you're already on the crossing. Keep going is the safest option. Get everyone out of the vehicle immediately. No, that's if you've broken down. Stop and reverse back to clear the crossing again. No, stop immediately and use your hazard warning lights. Remember, you'll be stopping on the tracks if that happened. Keep going and clear the crossing. Again, that's the safest option. So there you have it, rules of the road. All you've got to try and do is think of the safest option. Try to understand what they're asking you, i.e. the one-way street, for example. I know it doesn't make it clear they're talking about lanes, but you have to be thinking about asking the question, is it possible? It probably is. And also look for the golden nuggets. Sometimes there's clues in the question. That's what I always say, read the questions first, look at the image, and then go looking for the answer. I'm gonna give you plenty more hints and tips as the series develops. All we're doing is practice makes you better. So you're gonna practice along with me. I'm gonna make you better so you pass that theory test. If you haven't already, join us in the Discord community where you can ask more questions, study with like-minded students. The invitation will be in the description and as a pinned comment. Click on that, it takes you straight into Discord. You're gonna have access to me and other like-minded students. So if you got some value from that, like, comment below and subscribe. YouTube's gonna show you a video here. I'm gonna show you a video here. Go off and watch which one's relevant to you and I will catch you in the next video.